price has been paid that we come out of prison. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The price has been paid. The price was the price of the blood of an innocent lamb. The lamb of God paid the price with his own blood. So he purchased us again. for joining us today. It's our continual prayer that something has blessed your heart or even changed your life as you listen. It's our vision to share the healing love of Jesus Christ with all who will hear. Would you consider helping us through partnering with us through your giving? Your gift of any amount will help share the gospel of Jesus Christ through this broadcast, Healing the Brokenhearted. And as a special thank you for your gift of $20 or more, we will send you a copy of The Healing Station. Please visit our website at ApostleLarryHearing.com or you can find us on social media. Thank you. Chapter 1 in St. Mark, beginning at verse 14, there's uh, two verses here, so uh, thank you for standing one more time. Praise God. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll read the first verse and then we'll read the other one together verse 14 reads now as John was put in prison Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and, and saying, saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand repent ye and believe the gospel praise the Lord now let's pray together if you can uh, just join hands with someone if you will our Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We do honor you for the day that you've made. We thank you, Lord God, that you've allowed us to live. You gave us breath and life and health, and we thank you for these things, Father. We realize that, Lord, it was not our goodness that you've done this thing, but because of your mercy and grace, we're enjoying these benefits. So we thank you very much. We thank you for each and every one this year. Under the sound of my voice, and I ask the Lord for clarity of the word. I ask for the inspiration of the Lord, and I ask the Lord for the Holy Spirit to take control and minister to our hearts today. We thank you, and we honor you for everything that you will do. In Jesus' precious name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. <clears throat> I'm going to talk briefly uh, again about the kingdom of God. We some time back um, talked a bit on the kingdom of God and so we want to sort of reiterate to some and for those that perhaps have not uh, heard more d detail about the kingdom to share with you today and hopefully it will bring some inspiration as far as um, who we are and our purpose in the kingdom of God so we looked at two verses here, one, uh, <clears throat> verses 14 and 15, and I'll read it again. It says, now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So the kingdom of God, that was central in Jesus' message, the kingdom of God. And if you, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, you find not only was it central in Jesus' message, but it was central also in the message of the disciples here because he instructed them to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. And so that's what I want to share briefly today, the good news of the kingdom of God. And... By way of definition, the kingdom of God is the dynamic reign or kingly rule of God. 
the dynamic reign or the kingly rule of God, the rule of God. Uh, specifically, um, concretely, it is the sphere in which the rule is experienced. The sphere, the reign or the territory, the dimension in which this kingly rule is experienced. Uh, the kingdom of God. When you think in terms of a kingdom, naturally there are certain terms that are synonymous with the idea. Power, authority, might, dominion. And it's the same way with the kingdom of God. Uh, it's an encouraging thing to think in terms of the kingdom of God. Um, and so there are a few uh, points or pointers, truths concerning the kingdom of God that I um, will briefly leave with you today. There's a lot said about the kingdom, not only in the Gospels, but in other epistles also it talks about the kingdom. Even in the Old Testament, Daniel talks about in the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Uh, so we know that we're in a kingdom that cannot be overthrown. And this kingdom uh, will go on forever. There's no danger of another kingdom uh, overruling and doing like what we have heard, read in our textbooks about the kingdoms of this world. We know that the present kingdoms of this world are under the sway and power of Satan, according to the word of God. But we also know that before it's all over with, the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. So we have hope in the kingdom. We are part of the greatest kingdom that has ever and will ever rule. It is something that you and I should really constantly be thankful to the Lord and give thanks to him for bringing us into the kingdom of God. So once again, the kingdom is the kingly rule of God. The dynamic reign or the kingly rule of God. God ruling in the earth and the hearts of man. You and I are a part of that dynamic kingdom. Abstractly, one uh, uh, author said or uh, theologian said that the abstract meaning is the authority to rule. The authority to rule when you're thinking in terms of the kingdom. But concretely, it means the realm in which a reign is exercised. And it is whoever hears the message of the gospel and believes, they will become the recipients of the benefits of the kingdom. The kingdom has a lot of benefits and I hope that perhaps for it's over with, we can so better, much better appreciate what we're a part of and exercise more of that which God is expecting us to do in keeping with whose we are and who we are. The kingdom, someone say kingdom of God. And this kingdom, just like earthly kingdoms, carries with it power, dominion and might, authority. And when Jesus walked the face of the earth uh, as the God-man, he, being the king of this kingdom, began to demonstrate the rule and the authority 
of the mighty king of this kingdom. And we'll talk a bit about that in a little. Uh, the purpose of the kingdom. It's mentioned, of course, the kingdom of God is mentioned in the Old Testament and it's missing, missing in the Greek version. Uh, and it's men mentioned in the epistles, as I said, it's mentioned in Revelation. So the kingdom being the central part of Jesus' message should be important to you and I today. Praise God. Uh, when in the book of Acts, as I said, Jesus, when he, uh, before he left to go back to the Father, he felt it necessary to tell the disciples uh, about the kingdom. He began to tell them, the Bible says, many things about the kingdom of God. There were things that Obviously, he did not have an opportunity to share or they were not perhaps ready for it when he walked the face of the earth. But then in Acts 1, it says, verse 4, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. And the earlier part, he mentioned here uh, uh, to Theophilus all that Jesus began both to do and teach till the day he, which he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandment to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days, and the Bible says, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So there are things that Jesus, uh, before he was going to um, operate in his uh, office of high priest, he wanted to talk to them about the kingdom of God. So the kingdom is important. And um, the object or the purpose of the divine rule, I want you to ponder this in your mind. The object of the divine rule is the redemption of men and their deliverance from the powers of evil. The purpose, the object of the divine rule the divine kingly rule of God is the redemption of men and their deliverance from the powers of evil. That just really excites me when I, when I read that. And so there's purpose behind the kingdom of God. It comes to destroy the powers that rule and reign presently. This kingdom is dynamic. It is, it, is, it is so powerful. I, as I was just reading and reiterating in my mind, it just really just gave strength in, to me just to, to hear it, that this kingdom that we are part of cannot be overthrown, can't be shaken. And this kingdom is so dynamic and so powerful that it's going to destroy all evil powers that is in opposition to God. I tell you, that, that's something to get excited about. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Now, I'm going to read a little something here. It's found in 1 Corinthians here. Uh, it, it, it says it here. It says it uh, pretty, pretty accurately. 1 Corinthians 15, if you care to turn there.
1 Corinthians 15, starts at verse 20. It says, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, afterward, they that are Christ at his coming, then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down, everybody see this, all rule and all authority and power. Boy, that just excites me, I tell you. When you see how much you have to fight spiritual powers here and you read something like that, it ought to encourage your heart. Verse 25 says, For he must reign till he had put down all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For he had put all things under his feet, but when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued to him, this is Christ, then shall the Son also himself be subject to him, the Father, God, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So when the Son shall rule, and God, through Christ, put down all enemies, make them his footstool, then Christ will turn over that reign and rule to the Father, so that God will be all in all. So it's a win-win situation when you're in Christ. Hallelujah. I, I just, uh, you know, God is good, and uh, it gives us such hope. So once again, the object of the divine rule or the kingly rule of God is the redemption of men, the redeem man, and their deliverance from the powers of evil. I, I want to stress that. This is what you and I are in, and this is... The power that God, God is working when it seemed like he is not working. He is always working according to his purpose and plan. And so you know that eventually every one of those powers that are hostile and in opposition to God's plan and his kingdom are going to be destroyed because of God. And so Christ must reign. Or Christ's reign means the destruction of all hostile powers. And the Bible just pointed out in Corinthians, the last of which is death. You and I know how hostile death is. I mean, death separates loved ones. It leaves hearts lonely. It leaves hearts broken. Feeling, people's hearts feeling abandoned. Death is cruel. Death takes loved ones, you know, without their wanting, wanting to be taken. Death is an enemy. It's an enemy. And God says death is an enemy, but he also left us not without hope. Hallelujah. He tasted death. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Tasted death for every man. In other words, he came to die for our sins. Why did he have to die? Well, because of us, right? We sin, and the soul that sinned, the Bible says it shall die, right? The wages for the sin is death. And so Jesus came, and he tasted death for every man and delivered those who, through fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Through this fear. It is easy for the enemy says, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill your loved ones. And if a person doesn't know, it puts a panic in their heart, right? Because death is, 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 is cruel. It's an enemy. But that enemy is the last of the enemies 
that God will put down under his feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm excited about that. Thank you, Jesus, because I see the end of the enemy. Hallelujah. He does not win. He does not win. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We see that God's God not going to rule and reign. And um, so the redemption, he says, the object of the divine rule is the redemption of men, to redeem mankind. Soteriology is the study of salvation. Eschatology means the study of last things. Uh, so the, the object of the divine rule, the, the, the reason, the purpose why God rules, is ruling in his kingdom, is to redeem us. Redeem us from what? Well, let's look at the word redemption. Redemption, according to the dictionary, says, an act of saving from sin, error, or evil. Redemption is the act of regaining, somebody say regaining, or gaining possession of something in exchange for payment or clearing of debt. So the Bible says Jesus Christ is a ransom, right? He's a ransom for our sins. And the Bible does say that ye are bought with a price, right? The Bible tells us that Jesus purchased the church, right? With his what? Own blood. We've been purchased by God. Hallelujah. And we've been redeemed. Redemption is to buy or to redeem means to buy back. We've been redeemed. We've been repurchased by our initial owner. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God could have said, well, I don't want them back anyway. They just, uh, uh, you know, uh, denied me and they just left me, so I don't want them back anyway. But God has that love. He has that steadfast Love, Hallelujah. He made us for himself. And so he was not satisfied that we were in the hands of our enemies. Hallelujah. So Jesus had a plan. God had a plan. And Jesus was the price or the lamb or the sacrificial offering. Hallelujah. Or the ransom price that was to be paid for our salvation, for our sins that we committed, and for our deliverance. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, listen. You and I cannot pay any price to be delivered from sin. Is that clear? Have you heard people say, I'm going to get myself together? Well... They will forever be in that state trying to get themselves together. But when they hear the gospel message that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in the gospel message would not be destroyed but have life. The Bible says whoever has the son has life. That life is in his son, Jesus Christ. And life is precious. Why is it precious? Because the Bible says we were dead. We were dead. Dead in trespasses and sins. Separated from God. Could not fellowship with God. Because we were sinners and we were dead, repulsive you know, to that which is holy, right? But while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Does that make somebody thankful? Is that? Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Shed his own blood. That we might have freedom, that we might have life. We were dead. And when he died for us, 
He died. He took our sins. He suffered as a thief or as a criminal for us so that we could have life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. And if he went to that degree, to that degree of sacrifice and to please the Father, then shouldn't we enjoy this freedom, this deliverance? Hallelujah. God wants us to be free. The price has been paid that we come out of prison. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The price has been paid. The price was the price of the blood of an innocent lamb. The lamb of God paid the price with his own blood. So he purchased us again, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We've been redeemed. And the purpose of the rule of the kingdom of God was to redeem mankind, to save him because he was lost and had it for a devil's hell. Hallelujah. But God, when we were sinners, aliens, separated from the life of God, gave his life, purchased us again. Put life in us again. Put life in us again. Put life in us again. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. That's why the Bible says whoever has the Son has life. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said in his word, the thief cometh not but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. God leaves us in the hand of Satan. That's what he'll do. But he said, I am come that the sheep might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. Life drives out sickness and disease and evil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Life drives out evil. Life drives out the, the darkness. Hallelujah. And so Jesus comes only to do us good. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 